Good morning, everybody. It's Dr. Edward here with Pearl. It's a little bit early in the morning here in Australia, but it's lovely to be with you all. Um, looking forward to answering all of your questions today. So um, day two uh, is all about alternative and holistic um, options for treatment of anxiety. So you will have heard a whole lot of information from a whole lot of different um, people about uh, different ways of being able to help our beautiful anxious dogs. Um, we had Dr. Jean Hoffey talking about flower essences, which is something that I use a lot in my practice and really think are amazing. Lisa Spector with Music for Anxiety and Creating a Sound Safe Home. Dr. Jeff Feynman talking about Vitality and Balance System. Dr. Kara Gubbins, that's an interview that I really enjoyed with how animal communication can and can't help anxious dogs. Dr. Barry Sands, creating harmony and coherence within yourself. And from one of our sponsors, Poly Pet, Product, Poly Pet Products, Jed Davis, spoke about reducing anxiety, an objective approach to a stress-free pet. So please say hello, everybody who's out there. I'd love to hear where you're from, um, what animals you're hanging out with today, uh, maybe what's going on with your animals. And please uh, start asking any questions you might have in the comments. So the alternative and holistic um, approaches to treating anxiety are certainly my sweet spot. Um, certainly what I'd want to try out with the animals that I'm working with before I try anything else. Um, because as we all know, the more complementary alternative holistic treatments are a lot safer and um, gentler for our dog's systems. And they can also be um, very, very effective. Sometimes it can take a little while and a bit of experimentation to find out which particular alternative and complementary and holistic uh, anxiety treatments work the best for um, for your dogs, for your anxious dogs. So it's worth experimenting and trying out different things and, and keeping a good record of um, how your dogs respond to things. So who's out there? Please say hello. Pearl would like to meet you all. So please pop in the chat, um, say hi, and especially would love to answer any questions that you have there. So Pearl here um, has anxiety issues. She's had anxiety issues pretty much her whole life, um, has had really uh, pretty bad thunder sensitivity and anxiety for a long time and has some separation anxiety, doesn't like being left alone. Hi, Rochelle from Ohio. Hi, Boogie Mensa. Um, so who's got a question for me out there? <clears throat> so my approach with Pearl with helping her with her anxiety has been primarily using um, therapeutic touch, relaxing touch. Uh, that is something that we've done a lot of with Pearl over the years when there has been thunderstorms especially and with the separation anxiety funnily enough she's fine when she's in the backyard but if she's in the house um, we, have, we would come back to destroyed blinds and things like that and Pearl is nearly 15 now she's an old girl so her anxiety is getting a little bit worse as she ages we've had to give I've put her on CBD as well recently, which has helped quite a bit. And we continue on with the therapeutic touch. Hi, Shelley from New Brunswick in Canada. And um, I'm still hanging out here waiting for a question to answer. So please do uh, ask away in the comments there if you're on Facebook or if you're on YouTube, you can ask in the comments. I'll be able to see the comments and um, Jindy will pop it up on the screen for us but um please do ask your questions no such thing as a silly question there will definitely be someone else out there who will benefit from the answers to your questions 
Hi Regan, we've got a German Shepherd. Um, Mix Lance, he's had a traumatic first three years of his life. So hopefully you're learning lots of things that can help your um, practice. Okay, we've got our first question with Gail. My dog gets anxious when she goes to the vet. She has to get x-rays for possible arthritis. Looking for suggestions, if possible, that I don't have to use gabapentin and trazodone to keep her calm for the x-rays. Um, much appreciate any ideas. I am in Pennsylvania, USA. Okay, so um, veterinary anxiety is a pretty common thing. Certainly a significant number of the animals and the dogs that come in to see me when I'm working in the vet hospital are, are anxious about being at the vet, some of them extremely so. So one thing you can do is go in um, to the vet clinic often and just sit there in the waiting room with the yummiest treats, the highest value possible treats that your dog loves more than anything else and give give them a lovely shower or rain of treats in the, in the waiting room and perhaps a whole lot of um, really connected, gentle, loving touch so that you get some positive associations happen, happening with um, going to the vet clinic. That's something that you can do if they've got really bad anxiety. You might start off just sitting in the car in the car park because the dogs know. They know when you take them to the vet. They often know when you turn into the street and suddenly they go, oh, my God, I'm going to the vet. It's time to get terrified. So you can um, definitely do that desensitization to the, to the vet clinic. Another thing to do is if possible, if there's a vet nearby you that you can find that does that is a fear-free uh, veterinary hospital or there's a vet within one of the hospitals that is a fear-free certified vet, um, see if you can go and see one of those vets. Now, um, I hear your concerns about using gabapentin or trazodone um, to keep her calm. I... I give this lovely old girl here um, gabapentin when she has to go to the vet clinic. Now, it makes the difference for her between her um, being really vocal and unhappy and anxious in, in the cage all day long and being more comfortable and settled. And I, I've got to tell you, I've, I've found that often some gabapentin can really help these, these dogs. It's, it's, there's two things that happens with the gabapentin. Um, it makes it easier for the animals. It makes it less stressful. It means that they're not reinforcing and making their veterinary anxiety worse with each visit. And it um, makes it a whole lot easier for the vet to actually examine your animal fully. Now, if, if you really don't want to um, use gabapentin and trazodone, then you could experiment with with the natural things like CBD uh, with the um, pheromones, the adaptive collars and, or, and sprays with the um, <laughs> Zylkine, the milk base, milk protein based one and the L-theanine um, and see if that's enough. If it's not enough, then, then the gabapentin might be a good idea. Okay, so who's the next one? From Michelle, have you used any of the other modalities, essential oils, etc., in, in addition to the whole energy body balance work in your practice? So I've used flower essences a lot. I've used some homeopathy. Um, I've used some herbal medicine. I haven't really used essential oils a lot, though I, I really love um, gentle, relaxing oils like lavender. Um, I think they can be a great addition to 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 helping anxious animals and the other thing that i used a lot of which is also part of the whole energy body balance in the whole energy body balance we have sort of uh two expressions of that that i use one is the the body work the relaxing touch and um teaching people how to have healthy boundaries with their animals how to get their animals to um to actually respect their personal space in a healthy way. And when people do this, we often see really good changes in anxiety as well. Um, yeah, so there's, 
and the other side of the whole energy body balance is is energy healing um so i use a lot of energy healing i i find that energy healing can be a very very helpful um adjunct treatment that can absolutely do no harm and can often be very 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 helpful in terms of healing um anxiety and a whole lot of other problems with our dogs okay so who's the next question and while you're waiting to please keep asking in the chat if you've got any questions ask away lynn says i am a bit wary about cbd for my dog what are the side effects um it's very rare to get any side effects from cbd i've i've used cbd with with many many dogs and cats over the years and the the most common side effect that you might see is a, a dog who is a bit sleepy a little bit lightly sedated and you know as with any medication you use for anxiety um whether it's prescription or non-prescription there's there's nearly always going to be some level of sedative activity and if you get a dog that ends up being too sleepy it's just an opportunity to reduce the dose and see what happens when you reduce the dose to um, you might have a dog that's a little bit more sensitive to cbd than than the average dog um, so then you can just reduce the amount a little bit and see what's going on uh, cbd another thing that can happen occasionally with cbd is that sometimes we see some elevated uh, liver enzymes it's usually a mild elevation of liver enzymes and um, usually not an, a problem but generally cbd is super 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 safe uh, it's not only good for anxiety it has multiple other benefits in the body it's an anti-inflammatory it's an uh, immune modulator so it can help the immune system be stronger and work better it is neuroprotective um, it's fantastic for the gastrointestinal system i've seen a lot of dogs with even very severe ibd inflammatory bowel disease improve out of sight on cbd so um, i think it's a very safe medicine and that if there are side effects they're usually very mild and not serious Okay, so Riggins' question is that Lance intermittently stops eating for a few days every couple of weeks. How can I tell if this is due to anxiety or just a lack of hunger? He is a slim weight. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, to tell you an answer to that one. Um, it depends how food driven I suppose one thing to test that is if you've got a dog that really loves their food that's got a high food drive um, then if they go off their food it's much more significant than if you've got one of these dogs that's you know could just take or leave the food a little bit isn't isn't really so interested in food if they go off a bit fussy about food, not, not you know, right, oh, it's dinner time, I couldn't really be too bothered with dinner, I might eat it in half an hour. But if you've got a dog that has um, uh, a really high food drive, who really loves their food, and then they stop eating every few days, for, for a few days every couple of weeks, that might be more significant. Another thing to look out for um, is going to be what is it have they had some fatty food in the time just before they've gone off their food because another reason this can happen is not anxiety at all but pancreatitis and nearly always pancreatitis dogs are very very sensitive to fatty food and if you if they're going off their food for a couple of days um, every time they've had a little snack of human food that might be a little bit higher in fat then um you you want to be uh, careful about that okay what's our next question from robin hi dr edward i've bought a collie mix that i rescued during covid she's five and a half years old i cannot have her around other dogs she lunges and barks even across the street where do i start to, to decrease this behavior i would love to be able to take her to a dog park 
So these reactive dogs, um, you've, it's it's definitely an anxiety, and what you've got is a um, it's it's the the fight face of anxiety. These are the dogs that their their response to, to anxiety to feeling in danger because they feel in danger when they see another dog. Um, usually, there's been a history of some kind of attack from another dog towards them. Um, and again, you want to really minimize the triggers. Um, I'd very strongly encourage you to come along to the whole energy body balance and learn how to do that therapeutic touch because I've had a number of students with reactive dogs who've seen really big improvements in their dog's reactivity uh, with using therapeutic touch at home every day to retrain the nervous system to come from that aroused state into relaxation. And then you can also use that touch in the face of stimuli and triggers that cause that that reactive response uh, we had one of our students who even in just in 10 days her dog went from being multiply reactive on walks to being calm and relaxed in the face of things that would have otherwise uh, triggered triggered her anxiety um, dog parks i wouldn't be taking a dog that has a history of reactivity even if you've managed to get them to the point where they're not reactive I would not take that dog to a dog park probably ever because you just never know in a dog park when there might be a poorly behaved off-leash dog that might blindside your dog and um, roll them over, give them another traumatic event and send them right back into that really awful reactive place. So dog parks in general are not places that I recommend you take anxious dogs. Dog parks, humans think they're great. Humans think that they're going to be fun for their dogs. A lot of dogs actually find dog parks stressful and difficult. Uh, not a good place to go for uh, your anxious dogs, I don't believe. I think you're better off um, going to quieter places where there's not so many dogs and not, especially where there's not off-leash dogs that can be um, causing big problems. And Robin Scott says, thank you so much for your insight. I'm a physiotherapist. We'll look into the touch technique. I'll just get Jindy to pop in a link where you can come through and, and sign up for my free masterclass on silent pain in pets. And we also talk about anxiety and touch in, in that masterclass. Okay, what's our next question? Hi, I'm Diana from the UK. I have a Romanian rescue dog who is two. I've had her for a year now. Um, she's very anxious when I take her for a walk, not interested in treats and doesn't listen. How can I work on this? I've tried starting with short walks, but haven't seen an improvement. Um, so she's also anxious and occasionally barks at strangers and dogs. So I'll just get Jindy to put down at the bottom of the comment stream the... Um, the, the link for the Silent Pain uh, Masterclass in which we give you a whole lot of info about the touch technique at the end of that masterclass. Um, hopefully, Jindy will be able to pop that link in. Just give me a second. So I'll just pop the link that I want you to share in the chat. Jindy, just give me one second. The chat. So that's the link. If you could just share that link, I'll put it in a private chat, please, Jindy. That'd be great. And once you've done that, we'll go to the next question. Um, if you can actually put that in the chat too, you have awesome, beautiful. Okay, what's our next question then? So that's the Romanian um, rescue dog. We're back to that question. So these uh, rescue dogs that have been street dogs are, are really interesting uh, creatures to, to connect with and work with. Uh, now, they've been very well socialised to cars and, and, you know, people walking past and things like that. But one thing that these animals, 
these rescue animals often have had nothing of practically is any kind of touch from humans during their socialization period. So um, you can use therapeutic touch with these dogs, but it can take some time to train the dogs to accept the therapeutic touch, relaxing touch. And if you have a dog that's not interested in treats, that can make the whole training thing more difficult. So if you have a dog that's not interested in treats, one thing that you can do is fast them for 24 hours before you're going to do the training work with treats and then use a really high value treat, something like a roast chicken from the supermarket, uh, cut up into small little squares, something very high value, something very, very, very flavorsome and yummy for the dog. And your dog, you said, doesn't listen. Well, your dog is listening, but your dog is not understanding. So you, you need to find a way to be able to communicate with that dog in a way that makes sense to them. With a dog like this, I'd probably start off with a lot of lead work and teaching the dog to yield to pressure, to, to give to pressure on the lead, to yield to pressure with touch to so that I can ask the dog to move with pressure and they'll go, oh, you want me to move over here and be nice and soft and yielding. Now, that's another thing that we teach quite a lot in the whole energy body balance work. It's a really important principle and can often help anxious dogs. Um, so if you can also use all of the, the different alternative complementary herbal um, CBD, the zarkine, the L-theanine, um, make sure you've got a good, healthy, fresh foods diet because that can help too with some of these dogs. Uh, so you need to use every other support you can in terms of complementary alternative treatments. And if, if none of them are working, then maybe consider trialing on, on anxiety medications in terms of prescription medications with this dog. And you know what? Some of these dogs, um, again, humans think that you've absolutely got to take a dog for a walk. It's, a, you know, they need to have a walk to be happy. Um, some of these anxious dogs that are reactive um, and poorly socialized are actually happier just to stay in the yard and not go for a walk. How much CBD per pound a dog? Um, it's not a question that I can answer um, on this quite so easily. Uh, but you'll find heaps of resources. And if you get onto the Earth Buddy crew, who are one of our beautiful sponsors on this event, they have um, a whole range of CBD products for, for dogs, beautiful, organic, um, lovely, lovely products. So please just contact earthbuddy.com and ask them about dose rates for dogs with various different types of conditions, anxiety, um, other health issues, whatever. Sean and the crew at Earth Buddy would be more than happy to help you with that. Dorothea says, energy healing. Do you use Reiki on your dogs? I, I don't use Reiki anymore. I trained in Reiki years ago. I don't use that kind of energy anymore. Uh, I use a particular kind of energy healing that we teach in the whole energy body balance um, work. So we have two home or professional practitioner level trainings for the whole energy body balance work. We have whole energy body balance uh, body work for pets, which is very physical, very hands-on, interacting with the fascia and the structures of the body. Uh, the, the relaxing touch is a big part of that, that particular training. And then we have a second home or professional practitioner training, which is whole energy body balance energy work for animals, which is high-level energy healing, intuitive development for, for all kinds of animals. Okay, from Beth, we've got, hi, Dr. Edward. My dog has anxiety when driving in the car. She's five years old. Is there a way to help that? She's also very dog aggressive towards dogs. So if you've got a dog who's got anxiety in the car and um, who has reactivity. Um, so the fundamental thing of, of all the anxiety problems is going to be um, the, the four M's. So the first one is environmental management. Uh, so you want to minimize exposure to um, whatever causes the anxiety response. So in this case, um, if you can find a way not to need to go in the car, 
then that's helpful. Now, if, if you do need to go in the car, you also want to be able to do that. So then the second M is, um, what is the second M? Is behavior modification. And you'd want to start working with behavior modification with your dog, um, both with the car trigger and with the reactivity to other dogs um, trigger. So with the car, that might look like um, going out and doing a whole lot of yummy, yummy treats, positive reinforcement, loving touch, relaxing therapeutic touch, um, making sure you've got the adapt tool, um, pheromone spray that you put in the car, uh, all of these things that that you're working on and therapeutic touch in the car to help the dog relax so that you can get to the point where you can put the you can hop in the dog car with the dog at home and it's just like oh wow this is the place where the yummy treats come from <laughs> i want to be in here and you might go for little drives with someone else driving while you do lots of supportive loving relaxing touch um, until you can hopefully desensitize slowly and carefully over time your dog to the so that they then have positive associations with going in the car and they don't have that anxiety response. Now, with the ones who are very dog aggressive, um, find a really good uh, R-plus positive reinforcement trainer to work with. Um, you know, you'll get some trainers that have special groups for reactive dogs where they uh, work with you so that you can have your dog at the distance where they feel safe safer or safe enough that they're not going up into that red zone and you can um, work with desensitizing that uh, animal to another dog coming with in in closer to them you can also use therapeutic touch in that process very very effectively so um, if you've got a dog that's very reactive um, to other dogs other people i also recommend a book called Bringing Light to Shadow, which is the story of Shadow, who's a dog who was taken on by a trainer, highly reactive, you know, actually biting people, very aggressive. And it's the, it's the story of the rehabilitation of Shadow. And it gives you a whole lot of good insight into what it takes to rehabilitate a, um, a really reactive dog and it gives you a very good um, insight into, into what you need to do. It's, it's, with, with anxiety, it's often quite a long road of treatment, of, of training, of behaviour modification, of medication, whether that be alternative complementary holistic medications. And if you need something stronger, which especially in more severe anxiety and especially in anxiety with dogs where they might be a danger to themselves or others in terms of aggression you might need to consider the prescription medications okay from ella hi dr edward my small dog barks at large humans dressed in black that lumber towards her or hover over her it causes problems should i use a dog whistle app Okay, I'm not really sure what a dog whistle app is. I've never heard of that. That's very, very fascinating. I'll have a little bit of research that. Is she barking because she's anxious? Absolutely, she's barking because she's anxious. When you get a response like that to uh, a person dressed in a certain way or a certain size of person or a man rather than women, um, then you've definitely got a, a dog that... Um, that is anxious. So the dog whistle app is like, uh, I probably wouldn't want to use that, no, um, particularly because a lot of those, those apps use very high frequency sounds, sounds that, that we humans cannot actually pick up on, that we can't hear. And we can't tell then whether the volume of that is going to be painful or uncomfortable for our dogs. So I would be really concerned that these silent whistles, these silent dog whistle apps are going to be perceived by the dog as an aversive thing, as something that is uncomfortable 
And while that might suppress behavior, often aversives, if you use them with anxious dogs, will suppress behavior, it doesn't make the anxiety go away and it, it actually increases the suffering of your dog. So I definitely wouldn't use a, a dog whistle app. I would um, use the same sort of approach that I, that I do uh, in terms of number one, learning how to do the relaxing touch. Um, if you want to do that, I'll just get Jindy to put in the comment stream again the link through to come and join me on our next Silent Pain Masterclass webinar, which um, will give you a whole lot of information about how to, if you just put that in the chat too, where people can see it in the chat stream, please, Jindy, that'd be great. Um, but if you click on that and sign up, you will, um, I'll teach you all about silent pain. And another thing about silent pain, soft tissue pain, is that it, it's very, very common in dogs. More than half the dogs I see have silent pain. They're humans are completely unaware of. And silent pain also is a big driver of anxiety and anxious behavior. So any kind of silent pain is going to make anxiety worse, existing anxiety worse, and can trigger anxiety symptoms. Okay, what's the next question? From Shelley, what can I do to help my German Shepherd, Tiara, get over her very high anxiety about having her paw touched, paws touched? She's 12 years old now. I've had her since she was four weeks old and this problem with her. Okay, um, that's a tough one. So what, what happens with, with poor anxiety, poor handling anxiety? I'm going to pull a little whippet paw out here so we've got a you can see a whippet paw. So you can see Pearl's totally fine with having her paws handled. She hasn't even lifted, hasn't even opened her eyes up. She's asleep here because it's very early in the morning. Um, so one thing you can do is, is a long and gentle process of desensitization, which is, um, if you just can remove that comment box, please, Jindy, thank you. So, you know, you'll start you'll hold and touch and massage the leg just down to the spot, far enough down the leg where the dog can cope with it. And you'll do this every day. Then you might move just a half a centimetre further down. If the dog gets anxious, you move half a centimetre back until they relax. And you might move half a centimetre down. And um, now this doesn't always work, but sometimes you can slowly, you know, millimetre by millimetre, day after day, Week after week, you can get down to the point where you can just hold that paw and the dog will be okay with it. Or they might be a bit anxious, but they'll tolerate you holding the paw. Then you just hold the little paw for um, ages and ages and ages until you feel them relax. Then you might start moving your fingers a little bit. Um, now, you will get some dogs that no matter how much desensitization you try to do, they're just, they've just decided that, um, you know, they've had a painful experience with their nails clipped and they're never going to let you touch that dog's paw. That's um, just not on. Uh, so with those ones, you're going to have to consider doing um, some kind of medication to help them now that might be flower essences it might be homeopathy it might be the herbal medicines like ashwagandha uh, and cbd um, l-theanine uh, the xylokine the more natural things and if those don't work and the nails really really need to be clipped then you might have to um, go to some some situational prescription medications like trazodone, clonidine, or um, gabapentin. And if that's not enough, we have a number of animals that come into our vet clinic that we have to give a heavy sedation to be able to clip their nails. It's the only way that we can do it without causing fear and pain and distress for the animal. I think, too, uh, just before I go to the next question, Another thing that you really need to think about with your anxious dogs are wants versus needs. Now, there might be things you want to do with your dogs, like going to the dog park or um, taking them to certain places that, that, that are not actual real needs. Um, and you only do the things you need to when you really, really need to. 
And when you do really need to do things with anxious dogs, then you can also um, be very careful that you support the animal with, with natural alternative complementary medicines and treatments, and if need be, with prescription medications purely for the to reduce suffering for the anxious animal. Okay, what's our next question? Um, can the essences also be given in conjunction with supplements, hip joint, probiotics, and CBD, the flower essences? Flower essences can be given in conjunction with anything and everything, right through the whole spectrum of all other treatments. They're um, totally, totally safe. And homeopathy is another kind of medicine that can be given with all other kinds of um, medications and treatments without any fear of interactions or problems. What's our next one? Okay, Nancy says, hi, we went through a difficult time while moving. We were anxious and harassed. Now our girls are terrified of people, outside noise and going out. How can we help them? Um, so what you want to do is, well, you know what the triggers are. They don't like people they don't like outside noise and they don't go, like going out so you've got um, a pretty clear understanding of, of what's causing your your, do your dog's anxiety responses um, so the first thing to do is to really support relaxation at home reinforce relaxation at home do relaxing games and enrichment exercises like sniffing out treats um, to a reinforce and a reward calmness at home. So this is another thing that you can absolutely do at home is that you can spend a lot just reinforcing, rewarding every time your dogs are calm and happy, go and give them some loving touch, give them some yummy treats. Um, get them on to get some good flower essences, some homeopathy. Um, go and see a holistic veterinarian and you can often work with a holistic veterinarian at a distance over the phone if you don't have one local to you. Um, get them onto CBD. Learn how to do the relaxing therapeutic touch so that you can be doing that every day at home, a um, couple of times a day, and any time your dogs get triggered into anxiety, you can use this, this deeply relaxing touch to help bring them out of anxiety and teach them um, how to be calm and easy at home. And then you can uh, then apply all that in the face of the stressful stimuli. And over time, you should be able to help those dogs reset. Um, you, and if, if you try all the more alternative holistic things and those are not working, then consider going to your veterinarian and, and experimenting with some prescription medications. Um, the other thing too with, with you and and having been through a traumatic experience is, and this is really important for everyone with, with any kind of anxious dog, is to, you've got to look after yourself, the human, and look at your stress and anxiety levels. And if you have any kind of stress or anxiety going on, you absolutely need to be getting some help for yourself to be relaxing, to be healing your trauma and getting into a better place because your state of being very, very strongly affects your dog's state of being. And Dorothy, I just see in the comments says, how do I know if the CBD oil I get is of decent quality? Um, go to Earth Buddy because Earth Buddy has very high quality, beautiful CBD products. And um, you can, there's a download too uh, in the members area for the summit. You will see that there's a, a you can, you can download a, an ebook from the Earth Buddy people that has a whole lot of information about CBD and anxiety in pets. And you can also download uh, an ebook from Polypets, our other sponsors, about their supplements and how they can help with anxiety. And there's a, about a 5,000 word ebook that I wrote where I did a big brain dump about um, everything that I could possibly think of to teach you about anxiety in dogs and, and a holistic approach to understanding and treating anxiety in dogs, which you'll also find in the members area when you when you log in to watch the um, summit so please take a moment to download them too because you get a lot of information in them that will help okay what's our next question 
My dog licks himself more and was diagnosed with allergies. Could it be because he's anxious? If you've got a dog that is licking or chewing at themselves, that is nearly always um, an allergy problem, an itchiness problem. A lot of people think that their dog's just got a habit of nibbling or chewing at their feet. It's not a habit. It's because there's an itchy sensation that the dog's chewing. Now, um, if you're itchy, it doesn't make you more irritable. So it can worsen existing um, anxiety issues quite a lot. So dealing with the itchiness can help reduce any existing anxiety. More of a, from Samantha, hello, more of a human to dog than just a dog question. My dog grew to be reactive mostly when I'm around. Any suggestions on what I, the human, can do to help lower anxiety that may reflect on my dog? So you may have a, a resource guarding issue going on there and the dog is guarding you as a resource or um, sometimes can be overly protective uh, with you and with other people. So um, I would say that it would be good for you to find a really skilled positive reinforcement dog trainer and also, you know, listen to the summit, go through, um, experiment with all the different interventions and treatments and supplements and medicines that we've talked about. Um, and if, if all that's not working, then go to your vet and potentially try out some, some um, pharmaceuticals to perhaps help bridge, to help the, the dog come down enough that your other interventions can work better, especially the training one. Tina says, my English bulldog gets anxiety at vet visits and he always grabs the leash to chew nurse on it. Any recommendations for something to use to calm him prior to appointments instead of trazodone? So all of the natural things that we've talked about, CBD, um, zarkine, uh, L-theanine, uh, the, they can be worth a try. But also going into the vet hospital and doing a whole lot of um, desensitization, joyful, yummy treats, visits where they just get really lovely things happen to them and you don't have any sort of consultation can really help over time. You know, if you go every week with a dog like this and they go for week and week, visit and visit and visit and visit and visit and wow, you know, only lovely things happen at the vet clinic, then that can significantly reduce their anxiety. Um, and the, the relaxing touch approach that I teach to can be really, really helpful for, for helping these dogs um, with calming down and, and relaxing and chilling out when, when you take them into stressful situations like going to the vet. Any recommendations for an anxious dog that gobbles his food down without chewing it? I put his food down and before I can stand back up, he's gobbled it down. Um, you know, this, this, uh, this whippet here is a little bit like that with, with her food. She can be a bit greedy and, and eat rather quickly. So you can get uh, special bowls that have like little posts standing up in the bowl that may mean that it's hard for the dog to eat it very quickly. You can feed your dogs um, in a Kong. You can pack a Kong full of food so that they've got to lick the food out of the Kong to help them slow down and eat more slowly. Um, yeah, so that's a couple of things you can try. Riggan says, we have a vet visit on Tuesday. I'm considering giving Lance gabapentin since he is scared of the vet. Will the gabapentin affect blood tests or urine tests because he's having a full panel done this visit? Absolutely not. So um, it's not unusual. I've just recently completed the fear-free certification and I've learned so much about how to help anxious vet anxious dogs have a better experience at the vets. But, you know, there'll be a number of dogs that have vet anxiety that, or, or don't really have vet anxiety. They have a needle anxiety. They have a needle, needle phobia. And they'll be fine until we start to try and collect blood from them. And then suddenly they'll go, oh, you're going to give me a needle. I'm not interested in this one little bit. Um, and, 
if if I'm there and I can see that this dog is becoming distressed, I'll say, "Whoa, well, let's stop. Let's not put. Let's not force anything with this dog because it's really bad idea to do that. It'll make follow up visits even worse with the anxiety." I say, "Okay, let's give you some gabapentin and get you to come back tomorrow because we don't want to make the vet anxiety any worse." And um, you know, another thing too, all of you here on the panel, just to let you know that we have a special four-week high-level masterclass um, happening on anxiety and dogs with me leading it and teaching you a small group, only 20 people in the class that's happening starting on, I think, the 17th of September, a couple of weeks after the summit starts. Um, Jindy will just pop up a link for that in the chat and on the screen which if you want to, to work with me to formulate and implement a, a holistic dog anxiety treatment plan to help your anxious pups um, come along, it's going to be a really, really good training to do to help you um, do what you need to do to help your anxious dogs heal. Okay. From Clara, Claire, sorry. My dog has anxiety in the car. Our vet has prescribed fluoxetine. She's been taking this for four weeks. Um, she, we've been working with her to get into the car with treats, and she's a lot better, but goes from being okay to super anxious in a second. Am I making it worse, training her? Look, I think it's really important with these dogs that have anxiety around the car to, to not shy away from the problem and to do everything you can to, to at least help them be able to drive without too much distress. Now, fluoxetine takes usually six to eight weeks to, to take full effect. Um, now, you can be, be sitting in the car doing treats, positive reinforcement. You can use all of those complementary alternative and holistic treatments alongside fluoxetine, the flower essences, like Rescue Remedy would be a great one to be using in this situation as well. Um, homeopathy can be helpful. You might need to talk to a homeopathic vet to, to work out what remedy might be best situationally for that situation in the car and also in terms of that animal's constitution. That's um, a constitutional remedy sometimes can help a lot. Um, and the, the relaxing touch, relaxing body work, the whole energy body balance, um, somatic relaxation technique would be likely to be very, very helpful for um, behavior modification in the stressful circumstances that you're talking about with this dog. Um, so if you're doing the training in the right way, then you, you won't be making it worse, but just make sure that you've got lots of support to help you with the training. Dorothy says, how do I know the CBD oil I get is of decent quality? Go to earthbuddy.com, get your oils from them. They have very high quality, um, quality controlled, organic, beautiful, beautiful products. So Earth Buddy are your friend when it comes to CBD and they're one of our sponsors on this summit. From Beth, I have an English Springer, high energy. We let her run just about every day. She has every kind of anxiety you named above. Um, vet, cars, people, dogs, etc. Would it be helpful to have some rest days and not run free all the time? This, Beth, is a really, really good question. Now, another thing that I universally recommend with anxious dogs is that you reduce or minimize high arousal, high impact activities. Now, a lot of these dogs literally get addicted to being in an aroused and anxious state. They get um, addicted to the neurochemical hormones and and the the state of being of being anxious they they just they love it they actually get like a junkie and they they hit of whatever drug they take they 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 want to they'll be dropping the ball at people's feet saying throw the ball for me throw the ball for me come on throw the ball i want to be crazy i want to be crazy i love being crazy i'm addicted to being crazy so um with dogs like this if if they want to really play with toys all the time and they get really excited with their toys it's like, right, we're going to take all the toys away. We're going to put them in a box somewhere up high where the dog can't see them. And, you know, that dog then will have severe toy withdrawal for maybe a few days or a week or two. 
But I remember a border collie who I saw in Townsville years ago that just continually was after the people to throw the ball all day long, all day long. And they said, wow, I went back a week later and they said, wow, you know, he was really unhappy for a few days, but then he started lying down and resting and sleeping. Um, a healthy dog should be in a state of, I'm going to sneeze, I think. We'll see. Maybe it'll pass. Should be in healthy relaxation for 70 to 90% of their day and night. That includes sleep. But if you've got a dog that cannot switch off, that never relaxes, that is always on the go, that is hyper vigilant and hyper reactive to anything that happens, any little sound or thing that happens, um, you need to really, really focus on training relaxation and, and reducing any kind of activity that causes arousal. Um, that can be very, very important for these, these high energy dogs. You need to build an off switch with them. And that's where the relaxing therapeutic touch can be extraordinarily effective. My dog is constantly itching now on Purina. I have to give it for him two months. Just had it a month now. He's still itching, but I've put it down to dirty to the dirty tarmac with moss. Okay, will not be the dirty tarmac with moss. It's so unlikely it's not funny that that will be causing the itching response in your dog. It will be allergies. Um, if you've got severe allergies, then it might be a good idea to do a, a HESCA blood test um, to check exactly what allergens are causing the itching in your dog. Is it pollens? Is it um, dust mites from the home? Is it uh, other things? So uh, is it food sensitivities? You can also do a blood test for, for food sensitivities or you can do other um, food trials in terms of food exclusion trials. But um, you, you do need, if, especially if your dog is anxious, you do need to find a way to control the itching, but it'd be allergies to something. Um, from Shelley, Dr. Edward Licking could also be due to nerve issues as well. No, maybe a pinched nerve from the neck or spine. I found that a trip to the Cairo helps. It is possible. Um, you're probably only going to have one part of the body that, that they lick and chew at, like one, one, one leg rather than all four feet. If you've got all four feet that a dog's chewing at, then it's nearly always going to be allergies. Okay, so um, we've got a, li a little while longer. We've got another probably eight, seven or eight minutes to go. Uh, if there's anyone out there who has still got a question, please um, let me know. I would love to answer a few more questions. I know we've got more than 60 people out there with us on the lives. So it's lots and lots of people. Um, so... Please do ask any more questions if you do. Now, before we go, I just want to um, tell you about what's coming up. Day three is all about behavior modification, positive reinforcement training. We've got Dr. Ian Dunbar talking about um, fear periods in puppies. In fact, what he's really talking about is how he believes that if you socialize a puppy properly you don't get any fear periods and you can uh, anxiety proof them to a very high extent we've got Teodi anderson talking about why aversives make anxiety worse kamal fernandez working talking about positive reinforcement in behavior modification and ness jones is going to be talking about decoding separation anxiety so we've got four amazing world leading positive reinforcement dog trainers and people who also teach other people how to do dog training and then on day four, we're going to have veterinary treatment of anxiety. We've got Dr. Alex Avery digging into why it's so important to have a, a thorough veterinary examination in all anxious dogs. Dr. Christopher Packle, who's a board certified um, veterinary behavior specialist, talking about veterinary prescription drugs um, and medications, when and why they might be needed. Dr. Matthew Muir talking about integrative medicine, diet and, and diet for anxiety. Dr. Sharice talking about the wellness professionals and anxiety in them i'll be talking about healing anxiety with intentional touch we've got dr fossum talking about cbd as a treatment for anxiety as well um so I, 
and again, um, please download your your free um, resources from from myself, the ebook that I've written about understanding and treating anxiety holistically in the online thing. Um, and we've got another question there, which I'll cover in just a minute. A couple of questions. We should get through them before we finish up. But um, please do drop in when you when you log in to watch the thing. Uh, get your resources from myself, from Earth Buddy, and from Polypet Products. They're really awesome, good things to have. Um, and please do come and join me next Friday. We've got another one, a free Silent Pain Masterclass, which is just so important to learn because silent pain is nearly always a really important factor in just about every anxious dog that I meet. And if you've got an anxious dog, you need to find out about silent pain, about what it is, about why it's so easy to miss and what you need to do to make sure that you find it um, and treat it with, with therapeutic touch and also talk in that a bit about how the therapeutic touch approach. If you want to learn the, the relaxing therapeutic touch, come along to that silent pain masterclass. And at the end of it, I talk all about how you can learn that. Um, so I'll get Jindy to pop that in the chat as well. It's just been up on the screen. And now we've got a couple more questions that popped up right down at the end there. Um, are you familiar with the animal relief formula made by FES, not Barclower Institute? I'm not familiar with that one, but um, look, there's so many beautiful flower essences out there. And like with any kind of alternative complementary treatment, um, try a few different blends. There might be different flower essence blends that are focused on anxiety in dogs. There's probably multiple different blends out there that you can try. You'll probably find that one works better than others for your dog. Somehow this was skipped. I'm sorry that we skipped it. Janet, I'm not sure it's actually anxiety, but my pup gets very overexcited when he realizes we're getting ready to leave the house with him, whining, barking, circling. He loves going, gets too excited when he recognizes a wide variety of cues that indicates that we're getting ready to leave. He also start excited whining when we reach a destination that he enjoys, like the beach. So that could definitely be um, anxiety to some extent. The, the more fidget base of anxiety, which these dogs get super excited. They're the ones that jump all over everybody when someone comes to visit. Um, and when they get excited, stop responding to commands. So absolutely that. Um, I would I would have a very strong index of suspicion that this is anxiety and the more you can do to deal with it early, the better outcomes you'll get because often they'll accelerate and escalate over time. Um, Judy says, my shepherd is my service dog. Three years ago, we both attacked badly. Now when we're out and he sees another dog, he's upset and barking till I redirect his attention to me. So the fact that you can redirect the attention is a really good sign. Um, I would also work with all of experimenting with all of the alternative complementary holistic treatments we've been talking about. Um, it might be that having some medic pharmaceutical medication could, could help a lot in a case like this too. And I'd also encourage you to come along and learn the relaxing touch because you could use that as well to really help your beautiful um Service dog, relax and be calmer. Okay, I have a 12-year-old mix of many small breeds. He's skittish towards literally everything. He's really set off by ringing doorbells, strangers, and especially other dogs. He gets so laser-focused and barks so much that I think he doesn't hear me as he seems startled when I touch him. I've nearly been nipped. He doesn't otherwise bite, but highly, highly dog and stranger reactive, fearful of so many things, don't know where to start. Okay, so um, starting at home with a lot of this relaxing touch work would be a good thing. Um, and then another good place to start is just to make sure that you're on a good, fresh, healthy, whole foods diet Find a good positive reinforcement trainer who lives nearby. You start working with a trainer. Um, go to your vet. See if you can rule out um, pain or other causes that are going on. 
uh, CBD, the other natural things like the pheromones, like the um, the zoakine, the the L-theanine are all things that you can start integrating. Flower essences could be great. Homeopathy could be great. Um, and just start with doing something. Don't do nothing. Uh, and if you've got a dog like that too, you know, really consider coming along to the the Anxiety Masterclass, which you'll see a link to there in the comments. Um, uh, then I will help you. Uh, get through all that and and be able to uh, come out the other end, hopefully with a much happier dog. Okay, I think we're going to wrap it up today. It's been a really totally awesome um, live session, Q&A session. So please click through and and join, register for the, the Silent Pain Masterclass, which is with me next week. Uh, really, really important that you you learn how to assess your dogs for silent pain. Nearly every anxious dog that I see has got significant silent pain and silent pain tends to make anxiety a whole lot worse. And also click through and check out the Pet Summit's Anxiety Masterclass landing page because that'll be a whole four-week program where I uh, help you work out a, a, an effective and implement a, a a holistic treatment plan for your dog's anxiety so that you can have a nice clear plan about what you're going to do to help your anxious dogs heal. Beautiful. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to say goodbye for now. I'll see you back same time, same place tomorrow for another Q&A session. Have a beautiful day with your pets and we'll see you then.